Hello friends, welcome to Weathercast. Today's video is on how to read and interpret weather charts. So what is the importance of the weather charts? They actually provide a lot of information about the weather systems and what kind of weather these systems can bring in the sense that if they will have a cloudy weather, sunny weather, and how the temperature variation will happen within the boundary layer. The boundary layer, boundary layer is the portion where we all live in, in the sense that uh, it is from the ground to uh, approximately one kilometer above the ground. Uh, so the weather systems provide a very important information about the inclement weather patterns and also whether it is going to be a hot and sunny day uh, and what kind of surface temperature is expected. Is the ground temperature going to be hot or cold? So those kind of kinds of information is uh, um, gathered from these weather charts. That's why they form a very crucial part of weather forecasting. So the basic parameters that uh, uh, we can learn from these weather charts are the wind patterns at different vertical levels, the pressure patterns on the surface, and when you put these two together, the wind and pressure patterns, you can actually get the information about the temperature uh, on the surface. Uh, as we all know, uh, there are uh, two different types of pressure systems uh, on a uh, broad scale. Uh, they are uh, low pressure and high pressure systems and low pressure systems are those which are cyclonic systems that is uh, the systems that rotate in the same direction as the rotation of the earth and anticyclonic is uh, opposite to the rot rotation of the earth. So if you are looking at the northern hemisphere then anti-clockwise motion of the winds will provide a low pressure or a cyclonic system whereas the clockwise motion of the winds will provide a uh, anticyclonic uh, system or a high pressure. So these weather charts actually give us a lot of information about the high pressure system and low pressure systems and uh, it is uh, uh, very evident that the low pressure systems are uh, the systems that provide uh, inclement or bad weather because they lead to convergence of the winds and uh, as they converge uh, they come to a central point and from there uh, the uh, winds or the air is updrafted upwards and as the air uh, updrafts uh, then it condenses and forms clouds whereas high pressure system is uh, associated with sunny weather and wa a warm temperature on the surface. So basic weather systems that we can see on the charts are as follows. Uh, it starts from trough, uh, then uh, low, uh, well-marked low, which is WML, depression, and deep depression. And of course, there is one more category, which I have not written here, which are cyclones. And the basic difference between all these uh, different weather systems that I have indicated here are the uh, strength. And I have put them in the order of increasing strength. So a trough will have a very uh, low strength. It is a low st uh, strength uh, weather system, whereas cyclone is a very strong weather system and for, for that matter a depression or a deep depression is also a very strong weather system associated with uh, choppy uh, weather okay and uh, also it is uh, I have put it in the ease of formation in the sense that troughs are easy, uh, very easy to form uh, and they are routinely observed on a day-to-day -day basis whereas cyclones are difficult to form and unless and until uh, all the parameters come together it's not easy to form a uh, weather system such as cyclone or even a deep depression. So what is the difference between this uh, trough and the low pressure? Uh, the basic difference is that uh, as the as the air kind of starts undulating, okay, uh, then you uh, starts getting getting these wave kind of patterns, and these waves uh, actually dip down and uh, move up. This dipping down pattern is what is called trough, and the moving up pattern is called the ridge. So trough is uh, uh, inherently a cyclonic system because it has an anticlockwise motion of air whereas a ridge is a high pressure system or an anticyclonic system because it has a clockwise motion of the winds. So troughs are the ones which are uh, associated with uh, um, cloudy weather conditions because they lead to updraft. And as this undulation starts increasing then what happens is from the parent parcel these systems pinch off and then they form uh, either a low pressure or a high pressure. So this would be a low pressure because it is, as you can see, uh, clockwise, uh, sorry, anti-clockwise motion, so cyclonic motion, whereas this is a ridge or a high pressure because it is a uh, clockwise or anti-cyclonic motion. So that is the difference, basic difference. A trough is a moving pattern or a wave pattern which uh, circum, 
uh, which uh, moves along the entire circ circumference of the uh, globe, whereas the low pressure and high pressure systems pinch off and they kind of affect a particular area. And these are the kind of systems, the trough and the low pressures, uh, that we are trying to find on the pressure charts. And uh, a, a, a low pressure, if it, if it becomes intense, then it is uh, tagged as a well marked low, which I have mentioned here. And then a depression, if it is much stronger, and then as it keeps getting in, intense and intense, it uh, becomes a depression and a cyclone. So uh, ultimately, we have to look for these trough and uh, low kind of patterns. And as you can see, this is the trough, right? This is the trough and ridge kind of pattern that I was talking about, the dipping pattern and then the ridging or the um, uh, upward pattern. So this is a ridge and this is a trough. So trough is usually associated with bad weather. And then uh, as these pinch off, then you start producing this low pressure systems. So the surface pressure, pressure charts or the isobaric charts, wherein the lines are the isobars or connecting the, uh, the lines. These lines are basically the lines connecting the, the same pressure values. So along this line, the pressure would be the same. And along this line, the pressure would be the same. So low pressures, uh, as you, you have a D, which is a depression. So it has intensified into a strong system. So we are on the so the pressure charts, uh, the surface pressure pressure charts give you the uh, pattern of these low pressure and high pressure systems. So if this is a low pressure, then that means that on the surface there is going to be a updraft or convergence, and there will be cloudy weather around here. And what do these uh, pressure lines actually indicate? The two pressure lines. If I look at these two pressure lines, what do they indicate? They indicate the uh, thickness of the column and uh, relatively uh, they indicate a warm air or a cold air so if the thickness is small then it is a column of cold air or a uh, intense weather system or cloudy weather because cloudy weather is generally associated with a kind of a cold air and uh, 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 when the, the distance between the two pressure surf lines increases then it is a warm air column or a uh, high pressure system so which is evidently seen uh, as the gap increases then you have a ridge and as the gap reduces, you have a trough. So as you can see, the distance between the lines actually tells you the uh, low pressure and high pressure systems. The wind charts, uh, then again, uh, pressure is one, like I said, then wind charts are more important because they give information about uh, both uh, lower and upper layers of atmosphere. So pressure is only a surface quantity. Uh, you can kind of measure pressure at uh, different stations on the ground and you can draw the isobars. Whereas winds actually give information about uh, uh, at different uh, vertical levels. Okay, that's very important. And what is the importance of wind charts? And as you can see in this wind chart, you have a, a trough and a ridging kind of pattern. And as the circulation becomes more uh, organized, then you have a low pressure system or a high pressure system. So this is an anticyclone. This is a cyclone. So this is a high pressure. This is a low pressure. Uh, and you, of course, uh, so this ridge, trough and low pressures are the ones that you actually see in the charts. So what is the importance of wind charts? Uh, surface level winds actually helps in finding the zones of confluence or line of discontinuity. I'll talk about that more. 850 MB, these are the different pressure levels at which, sorry, these are the different uh, vertical levels at which wind uh, can be seen. Surface, 850 millibar, which is 1.5 kilometers from the ground. They are used to check the sustenance of uh, convergence and divergence zones or high pressure and low pressure zones or troughs and ridges. And 700, 700 millibar, which is around three kilometers from the ground, is helps, it, it helps, in it helps in finding the circulation patterns. Once again, it kind of uh, signifies whatever you see in 850 MBA. If it is more pronounced, then it will also be seen at 700 millibar. So 700 millibar is more like a confirmation that this system is actually um, uh, more pronounced. Uh, 500 millibar is the mid level or mid atmosphere where that means that that is 5.5 kilometers from the ground 10 kilometers is the tropopause that's where the atmosphere ends so this is mid level and that is where the um, um, the regions of high vorticity and associated instability exist and these unstable unstable motions actually can penetrate all the way to the ground and can cause intense weather systems 300 millibar is around uh, 9 kilometers from the ground that is where the tropopause is coming, atmosphere is kind of coming to an end. Uh, beyond that, you start hitting the stratosphere where the air is more clearer. And uh, 300 millibar is where the jet stream is present and you start seeing these polar vortex and upper air divergence, upper air circulations, uh, and those kind of patterns. <coughs> Sorry. So let us break it down. 850 millibar is what I have shown here. 
So you can uh, you can look at these charts. There are multiple um, uh, open source charts available. This is from EarthMelSchool.com. Uh, you have IMD as well and charts which which uh, IMD uh, model provides the charts. Then you can have you have Windy. So any chart you can take no, it doesn't matter. But 850 millibar is the lowest level of atmosphere uh, away from the boundary layer because within up to one kilometer you have the boundary layer where boundary layer is nothing but the effects of buildings. Uh, effects of um, your uh, mountains and all these things will come into picture. Above that, it is the free atmosphere where uh, these effects are not very pronounced. So you can actually start creating these nice organized circulation kind of motions. Uh, so that is the 850 is the first level where that starts the kind of the nice circulation patterns that you can see. And as you can see here, you have this low pressure system. It helps in finding <coughs> rough, low pressure, and also fronts. Fronts are nothing but confluence of warm air and cold air. So if you have these kind of frontal patterns that is also very visible in 850 millibar level. <coughs> so usually trough or low pressure at 850 millibar you would usually mean a cloudy weather at the ground. So that means you have chance of rain and also the daytime temperature might be lower because the clouds are there and they don't allow the sunlight to come in. So temperatures usually will be cooler than normal. Whereas a high or whereas a ridge or a high pressure at 850 millibar would mean very hot weather uh, heat wave kind of conditions. Uh, so this is the trough and ridge again. So if you have a trough kind of thing, then cloudy weather ridge is uh, more like a hot weather. And right now, uh, in most parts of Maharashtra, you have kind of a rich kind of a pattern. That's why it is a hot weather. Then you have 700 millibar level, which is again a low level of atmosphere. Uh, it again gives a better rep representation of trough and low pressure systems. It means the sustained trough and low pressure pattern is seen. Uh, which again would mean more cloudy and uh, um, uh, low uh, uh, precipitation uh, chances are high uh, uh, if this pattern sustains, if the trough and uh, low pressure pattern sustains at 700 millibar level. So it is more like a, a confirmation that 850 MBA and 700 MBA are, are sorry, 8, 8, 850 MB millibar and 700 millibar are behaving in a very similar pattern. So you can skip 700 millibar if you want, 850 is more important. Then you have 500 millibar which is the mid level uh, of atmosphere. It again helps in finding troughs but also it helps in finding uh, regions of strong vorticity. So wherever the vorticity is very intense that means uh, uh, these lines would indicate a mid level instability and these unstable air parcels will move down creating some inclement weather. So let us say a cold parcel is unable to sustain at that level so the vorticity will increase which is what I have so shown here. So this is an intense vortex. So this will create a mid-level uh, instability and uh, uh, that instability will percolate all the way to the ground causing very uh, intense weather and uh, sometimes thunderstorms and those kind of uh, motions can also be triggered at the 500 millibar level. So we have to be kind of very uh, careful at looking at these. The vorticity levels should be looked at 500 millibar uh, when, uh, at wind charts. Then you have 300 millibar level, uh, then uh, this is the upper, upper level of atmosphere. So you have lower level, you have ground, lower level, uh, mid level and upper level. So this is where you have jet streams and waves which like Rossby waves, Kelvin waves moving and also the upper air circulation which is very common we say UAC. That is also seen at these, uh, this millibar level. Of course this has to be seen in conjunction with 500 millibar because even in 500 millibar some imprint of these jet streams and waves and UAC will be seen. So you can kind of look at 500 and 300 together to get a good idea of how the jet stream is behaving, how the upper air circulation is behaving. Uh, so it helps in finding upper air divergence. So upper air divergence means that high pressure at the uh, upper level, so that means low pressure at the bottom. So 850 HPA uh, or 850 millibar, if it has a low pressure, which is convergence, then at 300 millibar or 500 millibar, it, it, it has to be divergence or it has to be high pressure. That is how continuity will be maintained. So something moving up should move out and create a continuous circulation pattern. So 300 millibar level, if a upper air divergence at 300 millibar is seen, then that is usually, that usually means that lower level, there is some inclement weather or there is some convergence, which means uh, high precipitation uh, is possible. So upper air convergence is, means, upper air convergence means low pressure at the high level. That means high pressure at the uh, lower levels, which means uh, sunny day. So if there is an anticyclone in 850 millibar, then 300 millibar will have a cyclone or a cyclonic circulation, which is which is not which is good for uh, 
uh, very hot and sunny weather at the ground. Then finally, you also have a 925 millibar level wind, which is the surface, close to the surface, which is the wind within the boundary layer. It shows uh, surface convergence or lines of discontinuity or which are the hot spots for thundercloud development. And this 925 HPA should be looked in conjunction with 850 millibar to confirm that the thunderstorms will form or not. For instance, you can see that you see this is uh, again, this is what I was saying. This is boundary layer dominated. So hence the winds patterns are very, very um, uh, chaotic. Whereas 850 millibar, if you remember, I'll go back. Uh, you see there is a nice circulation. So that's, this is the effect of boundary layer. Uh, the effect of boundary layer starts um, diminishing from 850 millibar. So that's when you can actually get a good idea of whether a low is forming, uh, how intense is the low and all those things. Actually, you can get it from 850 uh, level, uh, starting from 850 level. But 925 level is good to start seeing whether there is a line of discontinuity and wherever the line of discontinuity is there, you will actually start producing thunderclouds. But again, not all produce thunderclouds because there is also a wind discontinuity here, but there is no clouding here. This basically means that 850 millibar is not conducive enough for producing or sustaining these thunderstorms. Okay. So uh, like I said, these all these wind charts should be looked at very carefully. So I'll just try to summarize my final submission. During summertime and monsoon, uh, I usually look at surface and low level charts, which is surface means 8, 925 millibar to see if there is going to be some kind of thunderstorm possible possibility, uh, like confluence of winds or line of discontinuity, and then low level charts to confirm whether that uh, intent or whether that convergence can sustain itself due to a presence of a trough or a low pressure at 850 millibar or 700 millibar level. During winter time, most of the disturbances propagate from upper level because most of the dynamics upper level dynamics are active <coughs> so uh, then you have a mid-level instability which is dominated by the vortex that is forming at 500 millibar level so you have to look at 500 millibar or 300 millibar charts during the winters because uh, those can give you the how the jet stream is undulating and how the jet stream once it pinches off from the parent parcel how is it percolating down how the effect of that is percolating down so during winters you will see that the jet stream dips down very hard i don't have a chart for that but if it dips down, so for instance, yeah, 300 millibar. So this is a kind of a jet stream pattern. So if it comes down, then that means this level, this area is going to, if this green thing comes down, that means this area is going to see very intense weather in form of winter rains or western disturbance. So during winter, uh, I usually look at 500 millibar or 300 millibar charts to tell whether a winter storm is coming or how the nighttime temperature is going to drop because if a strong instability from the top See, at the top 500 millibar, the air is very, very cold. This you can see when you're flying up, right? It is very cold. So if that cold air comes down, then suddenly you can have a winter storm or you can also have a uh, uh, certain dip in the temperature, okay? Uh, so cyclones or massive weather system, it's like USC. Again, look at upper level because that is where the, the strengthening uh, is seen, okay? So um, uh, for, uh, so 500, 500 millibar is actually the most important. So if you if you if you ask me which are the two most important levels, I would say 850 millibar and 500 millibar. These are the two most important levels. Other levels are kind of supplementing uh, uh, in in uh, confirming whether a system is going to be produced or not. But 850 and 500 millibar uh, are the most important levels that, that can actually give you a lot of information along with the pressure charts. So I hope this video was helpful and I think this would have helped you in understanding how the weather uh, charts are being read and what at what levels you have to look at the weather charts. Uh, so uh, I hope you can uh, relate to this and I hope you start enjoying weather prediction or weather forecasting uh, as a hobby or as a professional. Uh, so there is more to this. This is, was a very basic video and I'm sure it became longer. I had expected it to be a shorter video but it came out very long. But I hope it was, uh, it is, it will be helpful for you all. So thank you for the support and please subscribe to this channel for regular updates.